I'm back. I'm not gonna let this one go today. So I'm gonna sit here for a second. And I'm gonna just think about how that we can make this really work. NCAA, Clemson University. You should know that future recruits and future parents are watching how you conduct yourself when you have a senior who, again, is 16 and two, and you basically bench him for a freshman, and you expect him to sit there and then back him up so you can continue to make more dough. That may have happened when I was playing because we didn't know any better. I got the injuries, I got the insurance, I got all the different scars and bruises to prove how dumb I was back then. Shout out to Kelly Bryant. Shout out to Jalen Hurts. Shout out to all the kids when the NCAA rule, transfer rule, and for those you know, I'm gonna break down how this works. So as of October 15th, officially goes into effect that the NCAA transfer rule, that an athlete can transfer without getting permission from the actual school that which they came from. However, you can play up to four games and still redshirt. So Kelly Bryant playing the fourth game by making this decision, if he touches the field at all in Syracuse, he will be stuck at Clemson University during his senior year. Uh, again, when it comes to guys that want to go down from 1A to 1AA, you don't have to actually go through this actual transfer. Once you transfer and decide to transfer, your scholarship is still intact for that semester. So in plain English is that when Kelly Bryan says he's going to leave, if he's going to graduate by the end of the semester, he's not kicked out of classes tomorrow. But he no longer should or would actually take any reps for the actual Clemson Tigers. His career at Clemson essentially is over by the side of the transfer. So for the for the mass that is going to happen, what we know as college football of the coaches recruiting and telling players one thing and telling parents one thing and doing another, um, the jig is up. And for those who don't know, again, I'm Robert T. Green. I'm the CEO of Pre Post Game. I'm also known as a player's rep here to educate, empower, protect the athletes and the family's best interests alone. Again, the family's best interests alone. Uh, not the industry, not the NCAA, not any coaches, not anybody in the league. With my job is to basically is to educate and empower these athletes so they understand their worth, know their worth, know and understand how this entire thing is built off of their efforts. And the fact that they need to uh, use their mind as much as they use their body to be successful in this business long term. Um, there is not an athlete. And again, if anyone is in here, a former athlete, want to get in here, please jump on in. Let me know you want to come in here and you tell me how your education in the NCAA while you played a sport, how it has set you up for success long term in life. Show me how. Let me know how that your job in the NCAA, which is what it was, a job, has provided you a six-figure and seven-figure seven salary. Let me know how your job in the NCAA when you transferred out or when you left school that how it set you up for life after the actual sport mentally emotionally socially financially let me know because again we still haven't found one yet but yet we still want to push that narrative that it's about free education there's about 56 million reasons why Taj Boyd Deshaun Watson and now Kelly Bryant should be furious with Clemson and Dabble Sweeney that's who I want to see. Come on in here, Will. If I see you, you got to come on in here, Will. Come on. I got to get my man, former Oakland Raider, college player, arena legend. We got to get him in here because because I need to know. We need answers, Will. Uh, you, you popped up. I'm going to try to get you in here regardless if you can or not. Because the fact of the matter is the, the question is, where 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 is these where is this free education at? Where has it benefited these actual athletes that create billions of dollars in this industry? I'm still waiting. Oh, is it because you're dealing with 17, 18, 19 year olds who literally have no idea how this stuff works? And so you can just basically tell them what you want to hear and they just go on about their business. We gotta get away from that. And so what happens now that you gave Trevor Lawrence, by all accounts, Trevor is a great quarterback. So don't let me get don't get it wrong. Trevor, Trevor earned everything he got. But the fact of the matter is, did Trevor, was Trevor told when he got recruited that he will be starting when he came to Clemson? Did Dabo Sweeney and his coaching staff go in there and tell that kid that and not tell 
Kelly Bryant and his family that? That's where my issue lies. Because that's how it went. I can assure you. Trevor Lawrence didn't come there and say he's going to back up Kelly Bryant. Trevor Lawrence didn't come there because somebody told him, yeah, you're going to compete. You can go on TV all day long, Dabble Sweeney, and tell everybody that we can pee here, we can pee here, we can pee here. That sounds good to kids because if you know about an athlete, the athlete's psyche is going to tell you they're always going to believe they're the best. But we also know you can set them up for failure. I don't, can't tell you how many athletes that I've talked to that literally, for example, if you don't want a kid to be successful, toss the ball, give the running back, toss the running back 29, 21 toss five times in a row with a deep there's nowhere it's going. See how successful that actual athlete is. But then you're going to tell the athlete he didn't read the hole right when the defense knew it was coming? Are you going to call plays that don't, like I said, once in a while that literally gives a kid a chance to be successful? Well, if you really wanted Kelly Bryant to be successful, then why did you keep taking him in and out of the game and say, you know what, now this guy has been more successful so we can go with the next guy? Play, play, play. Trevor Lawrence against Texas A&M. Start him in there and do it that way. But if you don't want Trevor Lawrence to fail, you use Kelly Bryant to keep the game the way it is so you can win. But now that Kelly Bryant is gone, we hope Trevor Lawrence is the guy that you thought he was. We hope that the next group of defensive linemen that you convinced to stay in college when they gave up a top 10 salary millions in the NFL in a sport that has a, a ton of injury risk where the NFL constantly looks for cheap labor to replace you. We hope, Dabble Sweeney, you can sleep good at night. We hope that future recruits and parents are watching how you conduct yourself. We hope. Because sports is not a game. It's all business. And every decision that you make, athletes, should not consist of what type of uniform they wear, not what type of uh, uh, graphic design they put up there. Not how they put your face on the scoreboard. It's about your education. And for 99% for of us, it's about your ability to go to the pro level and being prepared to go when that happens. The four national championship teams, coaches that remain in college is Urban Meyer, Jimbo Fisher, Dabo Sweeney, and Nick Saban. The NFL says it's a quarterback-driven league. Let's 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 test that theory. If I'm a kid and I'm a great quarterback and I'm in high school and I'm highly rated four star, five star, and I want to go to the National Football League, do I go play for Nabo Sweeney? Do I go play for Jimbo Fisher? Do I go play for Urban Meyer? Do I go play for Nick Saban? The answer is no. Pro style quarterbacks don't win national championships. The facts. So let's start with Florida State. Jimbo Fisher, he bounced off and went over to Texas A&M. He had E.J. Manuel. Where's he at right now on the street? Hopefully that Florida State education is working out for him. Where is Jameis Winston? Oh, he just started work again because when he was in college under Jimbo Fisher, between the sexual assault charges, between stealing crabs and fish and everything else, currently with the Uber driver, we hope that the young man is now on the right track. But yet... How is that basically a situation that Jimbo Fisher isn't responsible for since you turned him, your parents turned him over to you and you're developing their character? Christian Ponder, how did that work out? How great of a quarterback was he in the National Football League? You got James Blackman and you got DeAndre Francois. How's that all worked out under Jimbo Fisher? $85 million guaranteed. Left Florida State. $85 million guaranteed to Texas A&M. Next. Uh, Urban Meyer. Look at Urban Meyer. Leaders of men. Wrote a book about that. Got coaches. Being accused of sexual assault. Had players such as Aaron Hernandez, Double Murder, Riley Cooper, Percy Harvin, Cam Newton when he was throwing laptops out the window. Yet, his three quarterbacks that won him a national championship, Braxton Miller, where's he at right now? Not in the league. Cardell Jones, where's he at right now? Not in the league. JT Barrett, on the practice squad, 
And after he won a national championship as an all-time winning his quarterback in Big Ten history. Tell me, how's that free education working out for him? Tell me how that six-figure, seven-figure salary from playing for the Ohio State University is working out for him. It's not. Next. Dabo Sweeney. National championship. First one two years ago since 1981. Back-to-back college football playoffs under Taj Boyd. Under Deshaun Watson. Under Kelly Bryant. Taj is not in the league anymore. Where is Taj Boyd? Sean Watson, two, two ACL surgeries later, starting for Houston Texans. Got drafted number 12 for the Houston Texans after, after a guy named Mitch Trubisky, who only started nine games in his career, got drafted number two by the Chicago Bears. So not only did Dabo Sweeney get paid, but then yet a guy who Deshaun Watson beat for three years or four years in a row got paid significantly more. Mr. Trubisky's signing bonus is more than Deshaun Watson's entire salary. And now Kelly Bryant. 16-2. College football playoff. And now you turn around. And you tell this young man you're going to start a freshman. They were currently undefeated. So you say it's about team. What team? You say it's the next man up. There's never been a team or to ask the player what you want to have happen in their best interest. Or regarding their business. So you as an athlete and a parent have to make decisions within your best interest. And for those coaches who want to turn around and try to marginalize or... Um, demonize athletes for making decisions in their families. Just trust and know and understand that you don't have a job. So all of that backdoor stuff that you guys do, and we know how it works, is is being is being known and being told. So be very very careful with that, coaches. We know this is how it was back in the day. You can blackball a kid, set him up for failure, but again, another kid don't know what's going on, and then all of a sudden you do the same thing to the next one. I'm sure before a kid decides to go play quarterback for Clemson again, since you have made the decision to move on from Kelly Bryant, and if that kid wants to play football as a quarterback, why would he go to Clemson for the, ne for the next two to three years unless he wants to sit there and watch? But we know football is such a violent sport that he might get injured and never get a chance to play. So you better go where you're needed, not where they say they want you. If you're not willing to get if coaches, if you're not willing to, to put what you say in writing, I would strongly advise the athlete and the family to go elsewhere. Nothing, 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 nothing more egregious than having a 35 to 50 year old man lying to a 17 year old who comes from the hood. Because based off their socioeconomic standing, they don't understand things. Or you take advantage of a parent that might have a third grade education, but yet you can tell them that I'm going to give them a pair of gloves and some sweats and they're to jump up and down and say, woo -hee. It's going to stop. It's changing every day. October 15th, transfer rules coming into effect. Kelly Bryant is the beginning. Six players already transferred from Auburn. And there'll be more. And what you're going to find is that when these kids leave, and then they're going to bring other players in, and when the coaches become and the university become exposed for what they are, the NCAA is going to have another thing to deal with. The fact of the matter is, these guys aren't graduating. You had guys, you just, you just, he just told you. I'm gonna leave this school. This orange helmet, this 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 tiger paw, this rock don't mean that much to me. What means something to me is my playing time and the respect for me as a man that you clearly don't have, Davo Sweeney. So you can keep those nap rooms and the wiffle ball courts and all the other things you guys want to throw out there and do something with it. Sports is not a game. Sports is all business. Athletes and parents, invest in yourself, not the industry. This is 2018, not 1985. Stop falling for the hype and the smiles. And again, some of those letters you get from the coach, don't you know? That's, they're not even signing those half the time. Those are their interns. That's why you don't see their name signed half the time. It was just say coach. For those of you that are watching this, you know what I'm talking about. Go pull out that box.
those that make those that have the I'm sorry the golden rule is those that have the gold make the rules the goal is the players a society an economic society a capitalistic society again without these players none of this stuff exists gambling stadium funding uh, TV the sports bars people that go out on Friday night nobody want them nasty cheesy fries if those kids that was out there without that Nike check on their shoulder nobody be going to watch, going to those bars but you're not paying them you're still talking about this free education I'm still waiting. I've been on here for like 10 minutes. I want any former athlete or any coach if he wants to defend that this school and the NCAA is about education. Come online, coach, and tell me how you have your kids graduated and how their education has got them a job in corporate America and they transition successfully. I will write you a public apology. This Facebook page is full of coaches and full of athletes and full of people in the sports industry that many of them do not like what I'm saying and that's fine but they have every right to come on and try to explain to me how I'm wrong every day any day has it happened yet so once you guys realize how this actually works you start standing up for yourself like anything else in this world you'll be better off my name is Robert T. Green. I'm the CEO of Pre Post Game. I'm the players are up here to educate and empower, protect the athletes and families' best interests alone. Check us out at prepostgame.com. We'll give us a follow at the players rep one on Twitter, the players rep one on Instagram. You guys be well and God bless.